Hi, Cole here from Storytelling with Data. One challenge with virtual presentations is that you know your audience members are in front of their computers, which means the email inbox and other distractions are only a click away. You have to keep their attention. Today, I want to share a few simple tricks to optimize your content and yourself for virtual presentations. Let's start off by talking about how we can optimize our content. Key here is to avoid sitting on the same static slide for too long. This can be accomplished through a variety of means. When words are your content, you can animate their appearance. For example, I did an in-person presentation recently where I showed this slide. This works fine in a live setting because people can scan it and then turn their attention back to me as I talk through the various components, holding their attention through how I'm speaking to them. This works less well in a virtual setting, however, because after my audience scans that slide, they may feel like they know it all and can more easily tune out. So for virtual land to try to prevent this, I can employ some simple animation, not showing all of those words at once. Uh, maybe I show the path and then have the words appear one by one as I talk through each. This makes it visually clear to my audience that they haven't seen it all yet. Can even build some anticipation on their part that can be useful for maintaining their attention. So I want to think about how you can pace the content that you're showing visually. Don't overdo it. There is a magic when it comes to the right amount or a good amount. So get feedback on that piece. Let's take a look at another example. This is a similar one. Here we have a slide full of text. In person, I could show this slide, give my audience a few moments to read through it, and then bring the group together for a discussion. In virtual land, however, that's not a strategy that I would necessarily recommend. Rather, we could show each of these options one by one, talking through them as we do. Then after we do that, it might be appropriate to leave that slide up for a bit as the group discusses. A similar strategy of pacing works well when it's data we want to show to. Building graphs. This is a strategy that I often employ and that we teach when communicating data in a live setting as well, uh, particularly if it's something complex that we want to show. But even in cases where it's something simpler of building a graph piece by piece helps ensure the audience knows exactly where to look and what to see as you're doing so. So this is great in person. It's especially fantastic to do in a virtual setting where you're not there to gesture where people should look. So you're reliant on the visual and your verbal to make that clear. Let's take a look at an example. I might start by simply introducing the skeleton of the graph, the titles, the axis titles, and labels. This means that I can talk through these pieces without running the risk of my audience jumping to the data since I haven't shown it yet. And again, it builds that anticipation where they know something is coming, but we haven't revealed it quite yet. Then I can layer on the data. In some instances, it might make sense to cycle through the graph a few times using contrast to make it very clear where to look as I lend verbally the context that goes along with that. You might notice in these views that there's been a blank space to the right hand side of my graphs. It's not accident, that's by design, which brings me to our third simple tip for optimizing content, and that is to vary the view. What I mean by this is not only showing slides. I use a device called the ATEM Mini. I talk more about that in our video on tools for presenting virtually. It's a switcher that allows me to go back and forth between full screen slides, picture in picture, or full screen me. 
If you don't have a switcher, I encourage you to consider when it makes sense to have people's attention on the slide and when your virtual presentation might be better served by taking your slides down so that people are focusing on you and the words that you're saying. Speaking of attention on you, I want to talk for a brief bit about how you can optimize yourself for virtual presentations as well. When you're presenting in virtual land, you have been shrunken, you have been flattened, and also you're probably using a microphone of some sort. This means that you want to be conscious about both how you look and how you sound. When it comes to attire differences, personally, in person, I like to stay relatively neutral. So it's my animation that catches people. In virtual, however, I'm more likely to opt for something bright and bold. Uh, this makes it easy to pick me out in a screen full of people. Virtual land is where I might choose to wear a shirt full of horses or one with birds on it. You do still want to avoid anything that's going to distract, however. Small patterns, stripes, these can sometimes vibrate on screen, which is not ideal. I will also mention one benefit of virtual land, uh, which is something I like to think of as the modern day mullet, where your business on top, but you don't have to wear any uncomfortable shoes. <laughs> no one can see your feet. So slippers, flip flops, totally fine. Speaking of accessories, a few others to think about. Uh, virtual land, I definitely swap earrings for earbuds. I also am cognizant of anything that's going to make sound. I talk with my hands a lot, even when presenting virtually. So I would want to avoid bracelets that are going to hit together and make noise. Or I'll recommend wearing a watch presenting in person so you have an easy way to check the time. Virtually, however, I don't want to do that because when I set my hands down on the desk, if I've got a hard watch on, you're going to hear that picked up through the microphone. So there, I just want to make sure I have a clock in my line of sight. I also consider other things that I'll have on my desk that might end up in view. Right? My massive water bottle is fine while I'm working on my own. When I'm presenting, though, I might opt for something a little less bulky. Uh, speaking of what you're going to see on the camera, how you position yourself in the camera is also important. You want to avoid cutting off the top of your head or being in any sort of awkward view. Uh, aim to be roughly in the middle of your camera and at a size that is going to mean people can see your face and your expression. Even though you've been shrunken down a bit, you can still use these things to your advantage in your virtual presentations as well. And when it comes to knowing how you're coming across in your camera, recording yourself is a great way to do so. I'll actually refer you to episode one of the Storytelling with Cole series, which was all on recording yourself and some strategies to employ there. Speaking of other episodes, see episode four of the Storytelling with Cole series. If you'd like to see how the slides I've shared here are woven into the full presentation, you can also check out the final presentation video to compare my in-person presentation to the virtual one. I'm curious. What tip have I shared today that you'll employ in your next virtual presentation? Leave a comment below with your thoughts. Also, whether you present virtually or in person, I encourage you to check out my new book, Storytelling with You, for much more on how to prepare your materials and yourself to deliver stellar presentations. Thanks for tuning in.